Chase Lee Hockey with the Blue Futon. Another movie I saw today. Double feature. Save on gas. Juju Katsu Kaishin Zero. I am just going to guess completely. That's my guess. I'm calling this movie Juju from here on out. Is Juju worth your time if you don't know animated? Oh my god. <laughs> Just like the intro, like I said, anime, I really don't know none of it. I really don't watch Dragon Ball. I don't know a lot of other ones. Every time I try to find an anime, it's going to be gory as shit because I like that gory stuff. My brother tried to watch this basketball one where their superpowers are like pass the ball really well. So I'm like, this is, this is entertainment nowadays? I don't know what we're doing anymore. But anyway, Juju, what is this about? It's pretty simple. There's this guy. Or you call a high school or whatever that has a demon kind of like following him around. Is it a good demon? Is it a bad demon? Is it a curse? Is it not a curse? We have a panda, a girl, a guy that could speak craziness. And then we have this other clan that wants to kill this other clan. Will these high schoolers prevail with a panda? Or will this other clan come in and just demolish Tokyo as a whole? Did I get the synopsis right? I don't have a fucking clue because like I said, don't know anything about this anime. I'm pretty sure there are episodes before this movie. But as a person who is brand new to the series, brand new to this animation, brand new to the story, did I like it? I thought it was a very enjoyable experience. So with that, we'll go with the negative of the movie. I do think it is rushed in some of the parts where this person's training to like kind of control the curse, who this curse is. And that feels like it just randomly like goes to like this date. And like three months later, and this happened in December 24th, 2007, which I don't know why it's 2017. So if maybe someone in the comments could tell me why this anime is based, you know, five years ago. I don't know. But it feels like the timeline for this movie was very wishy-washy just for me. For not knowing what was actually happening. If I was missing anything from the episodes or not. But it did feel like the timeline was jumping a little bit too much. As well as some of the background characters for the bad guys. Like there's two teenagers that could do some weird stuff. A uh, guy with a whip and stuff like that. It just felt like they were thrown in them in the movie and I didn't feel like I have enough background character to actually connect with them of what they were doing. I knew what the main guy was doing and the main guy from the good guys were doing because they were high school buddies and they had different views. You've seen that many times before in other movies of like, you know, this type of person has this view, this person has this view. Let's connect and see how the people can, you know, work together in the world of Tokyo. But kind of like, you know, the new Dumbledore movie, Secret Dumbledore, you have, you know, Johnny Depp, R.I.P. character, and then you have Jude Law. Trying to connect them, should moguls and wizards together. This is kind of the same way of people that are cursed and people that, you know, can do this stuff. And monkeys, they're actually called monkeys. The guy calls it a monkey. And with that, I'm going to call it a monkey because this is a very weirdly toned movie of, you have the demons and their blood is purple. But then when you have humans die, it's pretty graphic and pretty bloody. And you're just like, oh, is this rated R? No, it's PG-13. Like, this demon's, like, sucking on the person that explodes. It's like, what is going on here? Some crazy shit happening on screen. But then, with that, it's very interesting of how they do the different animations. Because with the animation of the demons, it looks more cel-shaded than all the other anime type of, you know, animation, if you want to put it that way. And I did get some, you know, Gantz Zero. I, there's a really good live-action one on Netflix, and I just popped on. I like the animation. But it felt like it was the same story of these demons coming into Tokyo or a different city in Japan. And it's completely demolishing. There's these people that have to get in the way of the demons and kill it before other people die. So I felt like there was some connection between Juju and Gantz on that level. But I thought there were some funny moments in this movie. Especially with the panda and sexy talk. I thought that was pretty funny. Talking about boobs. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like small or big boobs. It's like, ah, I thought that was a pretty funny joke when it was in there as well. Uh... But as a person, like I said, never grew up on anime. Don't really watch it now. I still enjoy what I watch on screen. It's kind of like, you know, how I would just watch Turning Red. And that was that style that they were going for. I completely understand it. Because with this, you'll have some of the eyes just turn to sparkles. Or eyes just turn to completely white. So you're like, I guess that's their embarrassing face and stuff like that. But like I said, as a person, brand new to anime. Don't really know anything about it. I enjoy what I watched on screen. Yes, I thought there was some you know, tonal differences where you're like, okay, that's really bloody, that's really funny, that's really pretty graphic. So you're like, okay, that's a little interesting, as well as timeline shifts of like, 
where we are in this world. Are we always in 2017? Why is that? And I wish some of these characters, these bad guy characters, as well as this clan at the very end, I'm pretty sure uh, the main girl who can't get in the clan because she can only see the curse with the glasses. That's kind of her family, if you want to put it that way. Who are these background characters? Maybe I just missed it as a whole with the subtitles and everything like that, trying to read it pretty quick and see what was happening. So that could be my fault, just not reading everything extremely fast. But overall, Juju, I enjoyed it. Uh, would I watch it again? Maybe. But like I said, I'm not the biggest anime person. So, you know, it's kind of hard for me to judge. And if you're like, oh, you're completely wrong with this, sure. You know, punch me down. Because it's not a topic I know a lot about. So Juju will receive a 4 out of 5 with Fluton. It goes at 80%. So these are the Critics News scores gave this one. It's a 100% with 23 of them. Audience score a 99% with over 2,500. No critic consensus. Pretty impressive. But yeah, uh, given an 80%. I enjoyed it. Like I said, I I enjoyed it. So, 80, 99. Chase with the Blue Futon. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think about the Blue Futon Topia. You're Blue Tony. Just thank you for watching. Have a great day. Like I said, I thought this was going to make $6 million in the box office. It made 14 Watch out for these animes. They're a lot more popular than we think. But thank you for watching. I love all of you. Starry eyes. Starry eyes.